happy holidays dancers. Here's the thing, holidays are fun, but they can also be super stressful, especially if you are currently working on building a more supportive relationship with both food and body. So why is the holiday season so stressful for dancers? Well, schedules are often uprooted. There's a lot of time that might be spent away from the studio, and it's often following a time like such as with Nutcracker or winter performances, where you've just come from a several month long span of really boosting the amount of dancing you're doing between classes, rehearsals, and performances. Not just that, but family gatherings can be super stressful, especially if you are with some family who you haven't seen in quite some time. Maybe you've experienced some changes in your body or perhaps you're working on building a more supportive relationship with food and you've learned to shift away from some previous restrictive behaviors that your family members might still identify you with. Whatever the case, holidays are no doubt super stressful. And I remember a time when I really struggled around holiday meals, especially when I'd already begun that journey of healing my relationship with food. Comments from family who identified me as the healthy one were most unhelpful and even triggering at the time. And then, of course, there's the fear of overeating, a common fear that dancers often experience. Now I've detangled the topic of overeating in a previous video, but we're gonna talk about instances of how you can navigate through a more helpful and joyous holiday season while alleviating some of that stress and angst. It took me years to shift my holiday experience from stressful to joyous. And now as a registered dietitian nutritionist for you and for all of the dancers out there, I am super excited to share as many tips as I can to help you in experiencing what can be a very joyous time of the year. Let's break this down into common scenarios that I often see presented amongst the dancers I work with. So the first problematic issue is, of course, feeling super anxious about the food at your holiday meal. Overwhelming thoughts about the upcoming big meal can trigger instances of food restriction or deprivation. Now deprivation can also result from food insecurity, a major problem that we experience here in the United States. Deprivation can also be experienced on an intentional level, such as from restrictive dieting. If you're stressed about the amount of food that might be served, the types of food that might be served, like perhaps maybe they're more indulgent than the foods you often eat, or maybe you're worried about a lack of self-trust, that you're not gonna be able to trust yourself around certain foods. What do I want you to prioritize? Food flexibility. Now food flexibility, just like flexibility in the studio, takes time to successfully achieve. Similar to practicing your splits, the more you practice food flexibility, the better you are at navigating through life, feeling flexible around your food choices. Food flexibility allows dancers to navigate an ever-changing environment as it relates to their meals and snacks. This is especially important during holiday meals. Your holiday meal doesn't need to be thought of as a cheat meal or a meal that's completely off track from your everyday. We often see this as an issue with lifestyles centered around clean eating. Because these lifestyles are super inflexible, holiday meals and holiday dinners become impossible to navigate through joyously. And they become overwhelmed with stress and guilt around food options that are either more indulgent or not often consumed on an everyday basis. So practicing food flexibility throughout your days and months, and of course years leading up to any and all holidays is super important. But if you're watching this video and the holiday is today and you feel like you haven't practiced food flexibility so often, well guess what? I've got really good news because it is never too late to start. Opening up to foods that you feel you've restricted in the past is the first step. I know this is easier said than done, but perhaps take it one food at a time. And when you do break those food rules, when you reintroduce those trigger foods, try doing it during periods where you can be most mindful with it. You can even take a mindful moment to really assess the flavors, the aromas, the textures of that food. Doing so will help to slow you down at the moment and better prep you to also tune into your hunger and fullness levels. Another most common concern around the holidays is dealing with the dreaded food and body comments from, of course, who else but Aunt Karen. No shame if your name is actually Karen, but you know what I mean. First things first, 
work on setting boundaries. This might mean giving your family members or even friends a heads up on the journey that you've been since the last time they saw you. Maybe filling them in on this newfound work you've started with intuitive eating and generally just healing your relationship with food and body. You can remind them that those restrictive behaviors from the past really didn't serve you too well, so you're trying to make changes and their comments aren't too helpful. If you're really up for the conversation, which by the way, you don't have to be, then you can talk to them a little bit more about the anti-diet and intuitive approach and how tools like food flexibility have become super helpful in your journey towards building a more supportive relationship with your food choices. Now remember, it's not your job to educate the world. Actually, it's kind of my job, <laughs> but you should never feel pressure to change anyone's opinions on any of these topics. You can always refer out, you can refer your family members, you can refer your friends. You can say, hey, you know, I've been following this dietitian. She's been really helping me. You should go ahead, give her a follow, check out her YouTube channel. This is not a plug. This is simply just to help shift the pressure that you might feel on yourself for educating about the anti-diet realm, which you shouldn't feel the pressure to have to do. Now, of course, if you're really not up for these conversations, because I know chatting with family about these topics can be super challenging, then also you can just take the route and exit the conversation. Maybe that means doing a quick check on your phone. It could mean going to the bathroom to fix your hair, to maybe do a makeup retouch up, whatever it might be, but you are allowed to exit the situation in a conversation that feels super triggering and unhelpful to you. Another common issue that I see amongst dancers during the holidays is trying to save up for the big meal ahead. So saving up your calories or trying to compensate for an increased amount of food at a meal is gonna set you back onto that cycle where you feel super in control around food to then feeling super out of control around food, eventually leading to those experiences of overeating. This is probably one of the most common concerns that I do hear amongst dancers, and I can't stress this enough, but saving up calories for the big meal is not gonna help you at the meal. As long as your usual intake is not restrictive, then you wanna to stick to exactly that. Your usual regular meals and snacks spread consistently throughout your day. The reason for this, you don't wanna enter that meal in a state of biological deprivation because if you're due, your body's gonna have one purpose at that meal and it's going to be to replete the energy that it's lost from that deficit. This is gonna make it super challenging to not only eat mindfully at the bigger meal, but to also enjoy the meal as it is. Perhaps that means socializing with friends throughout the meal or talking or partaking in conversation. Whatever it might be, if you are preparing your body with sufficient meals and snacks throughout the hours and the days and the weeks leading up to that big meal, you are more likely to experience a mindful moment at the meal itself. Another important aspect right here within this concern is considering two things. The first is leftovers if they're accessible, but also becoming open to the idea that you very well might feel sad and disappointed at the end of the meal. So what do I mean by this? Well, first things first, if you're able to pack leftovers of this delicious meal, then that's amazing because leftovers will help you continue to enjoy this meal within the coming days after the holiday. This will help to ease up that mindset, that all or nothing mindset that actually can come pretty naturally during the holiday season, simply because these holiday meals really do only come once a year for the most part. Unless of course you do make an effort to trial some of these recipes throughout the year, which I, by the way, highly recommend. The other idea is to start coming to terms with the fact that you very well might feel sad and upset when the meal is over, you feel comfortably full, but you still have this delicious food in front of you and you are not quite psychologically ready to say bye to it. Start to consider the idea that it's okay to feel sad, it's okay to feel upset, in this moment, make space for that. And then start to think about, well, what can I do moving forward? Maybe it does mean experimenting with grandma's favorite recipe during the year. Remember, it's not really a rule to have to wait for the holiday meal to enjoy your favorite sweet potato pie. Which brings me to the next common concern that I hear about amongst dancers. And that's when they're trying to healthify grandma's recipes, or of course, whoever makes your favorite recipes. Now, you know what I mean, right? healthifying those brownies, perhaps making them chickpea, avocado brownies. There's nothing inherently wrong with wanting to experiment and boost the nutrient density of your meals and snacks and dessert. Actually, it could be a really fun activity, but I want you to tread with caution, especially during the holiday season when it comes to your holiday meals. 
If experimenting and healthifying some recipes is causing you to miss out on experiences of maybe the real deal or experiencing like nostalgic memories around some of your favorite foods, then you healthifying those recipes is likely rooted in a food rule instead of it being rooted in a true food choice. So start to assess and reevaluate whether or not healthifying those meals, snacks, desserts, whatever it might be, is actually helping you. And here we are, the last most common experience that I hear about amongst dancers during the holiday season, and that's setting very unrealistic standards for their holiday meals. See, I've given you tips on how to alleviate instances of overeating, especially at the holidays, especially in regards to those regular meals and snacks that we wanna prioritize in the hours, days, and weeks leading up to that holiday meal. I've also given you tips on how to set yourself up for a mindful moment with some of those foods, even at your holiday dinner table. But remember, there's no perfect scenario here. There is truly no shame in experiencing periods of overeating, and the same holds true during the holidays. Most often, these foods don't come often throughout the year. If they do, great, but for many, they don't. So that all or nothing mindset can be very unintentional during this time of year. Have compassion for yourself. Remember, there is no perfect way of eating, especially around these times. Most importantly, remember, while food plays a major part in the holiday season, it doesn't play the only part. You can also think about the experiences, the memories that you shared with your friends and your family who you may not see that often. Considering all of this will truly help you to build healthy and sustainable habits, especially during the holiday season. Thank you.